Welcome again to BrandyLibrary.tv and Cognac it is with Hervé Bash Gabrielsen right here. Good morning. Morning time. Yes. Good morning, Hervé. Definitely morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're now familiar with, with the Hervé, uh, with the Bash Gabrielsen Cognacs, but can you tell us a bit more about it? Yes, for sure. We, our company has been established in 1905. Uh, my great grandfather was the founder of the company. And he was a Norwegian guy. Uh, he settled down in Cognac doing his business. And he got married with a French lady. Mm -hmm. And together they got three sons and, uh, and then and then. And so I am the fourth generation of the, the family, the Bash Gabrielsen family. And I, I am actually the chairman of the company now. Very good. Yep. All right, so now, the Bash Gabrielsen Cognac, um, how would you describe it? Yep. In general. We, we have actually uh, two lines available in the U.S. market. We have uh, one classic line from the VS what, that we call Tricorche. Tricorche is because uh, it was uh, at the time in Norway uh, the only way during the prohibition, it was the only way to get some cognac was to, to get um, a paper from a doctor. So my great grandfather put some Red Cross at the time to, mm -hmm. to make sure that it was uh, considered as a good medicine. Of course it's not, but it could help. <laughs> uh, then we have a VSOP, uh, which, uh, the, sorry, the, the Tricorche is four years old, the VSOP is seven years old, classic still. The EXO is a fine champagne cognac, a blend of Grand Champagne, minimum 50% of Grand Champagne cognac and Petit Champagne. Mm -hmm. um, and we have also in the classic range, uh, Ordage. This Ordage is a Grand Champagne cognac, which is around 50 years aging. That's a beauty. Yeah, I, I mean, we got the, the gold medal in the uh, New York Spirit Awards uh, two years ago, and uh, we got a uh, lot of uh, awards in the tasting competition with this product, actually. It's a um, fantastic product. I, I believe so, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Flavia. <laughs> the XO is also nice. It's 20 years old in average, uh, which is uh, quite above the XO standards mm -hmm. in, the, in the industry. And we, we are selling now the, this classic line. Beside the classic line, you have the Nature and Elegance Cognacs. This Nature and Elegance Cognac is a special concept and it's uh, without any additives. So mm -hmm. it's just uh, cognac age, very carefully selected by our cellar master. And, uh, Quite the an innovation then for... Yeah, and regarding packaging, it's definitely something uh, different. We wanted to, to have a clear difference between the natural and elegance line and the classic line. Mm -hmm. um, and the taste also it is very different. It's much more into the, the dry side of the cognac. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good bridge for the whiskey drinkers That's true. Yeah. To, to go into the cognac category. Yeah. Now, so your cognacs, I understand that they can be coming from different Cruise different yes, areas. Yes. You source them with the same uh, wine growers, the same distillers. Yes, we do. We have a network of 150 wine growers. Uh, some of them we have some contracts with. Uh, some of them they, we just work at the gentleman agreements so for generations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we source mostly from Fambois for the young cognacs and a Grand and Petit Champagne for the older cognacs. I see. If I'm buying a uh, Trecors, yes. it's going to be mostly. Fambois. Yes, that's right. All right but yes. if I go to the Ordage, it's it's yes. strictly Grand Champagne. Yes, because Fambois gives a more fruity style to the cognac. So fruit is something very interesting in our cognac range for the youngest, mm -hmm. uh, Trecors and VSOP. And then in, when in you come to the EXO and above, then you will have mostly some Grand and Petit Champagne, which are more into the floral tones. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yep. Um, now, do you tell uh, those distillers that you, you you'd rather have it distilled in this particular way. Yes. Uh, or you're looking for the fruity note here. You're yes. looking for more uh, intensity mm. there. Is there a distillation on the lees? Uh, mm. uh, yeah, our cellar master is very very sensitive to the aging part. Actually, the distillation we use the same distillation as Remy Martin, which is with lees, mm -hmm. uh, but we are very careful with the aging. The more it is close to the river, the more humidity it is in the cellar, the more we like, because it gives more sm smoothness to the cognac. All right, so wet cellars? Yes, very wet. Yeah. For, for more gentle ventilation? Yeah, yeah a gentle and more smoothness in the, in the style. We are very in, in the smooth style uh, compared to some other uh, kind of big house, like for example Martel, which is more in dry style. Martel mm -hmm. was an Englishman, so it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it is um, very clear that the English prefer the dry style mm -hmm. uh, cognac, but we are, we are definitely on the smooth side. 
something you didn't talk about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. This this is uh, not for sale, but I, I brought to you, Flavian, just to... to uh, just as a tease for, yes. for viewers, I guess. <laughs> or those who, who can purchase those in, uh, in, in, in Europe. In Europe, they can, of course. It's uh, actually a vintage cognac. This is a very small part of the cognac business. Uh, because you have to follow some strict regulation mm -hmm. to be able to to put the name, the year of distillation on your on your bottle. Mm -hmm. So this one is a petite champagne from 1973, and um, it's a fantastic cognac, to my in my opinion. And it's also very in interesting to taste sometimes some vintage cognac because in general it comes from a single estate and a single year, mm -hmm. compared to all these uh, non-vintage cognac, which are a blend of different years and different estates. Mm -hmm. Can so you tell, um, say those last few years? Yes. Can you already tell? Well, 2008 will be. Yeah. One of those vintage or, yeah. or 2007. I'm exactly sure. because you know for wine vintage is very important in the in the wine for the wine uh, specialist, but uh, for cognac also because the distillation concentrates the taste of uh, the wine. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have a very very good wine, thanks to good conditions, weather conditions, good uh, humidity, and etc. etc., then you will have a concentration of this uh, positive uh, uh, mm -hmm. assets. So. Um, I think uh, 1973 was an excellent year. Um, I think 2005 will be a great year. Actually. Oh yeah? Yeah. But when will we see that then? Uh, I think you won't be retired. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it's, it's maybe in 10 years time, something like All right. that. Yeah. Very good, very good. Yeah. And now, uh, I know that some, some wine growers are trying, trying a bit more Colomba than yeah. than before. Yep. Um, is it? Are we still playing with Uni Blanc strictly? With yeah. The in the in the youngest qualities, yes. Uh, in the EXO, you have ten percent of Fol Blanche and Colomba. Okay. Yes. Uh, Fol Blanche is something that we like to, to work with, mm -hmm. but it's a very sensitive uh, varietal, mm -hmm. so it it takes a lot of uh, it demands a lot of uh, care to produce a good Fol Blanche. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. What is your take? On, on the wood, the impact of the wood. Is it uh, a lot of new oak? Is it yeah. of age already, yep. already uh, a used barrels? Actually, we use uh, some um, medium, medium plus um, eating in the, in the cask mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that we got a lot of vanilla taste and we use the, young, the, young, the new oak for the 12 first month of aging. Okay, so and that's for, for all of the, of the cognacs? Yeah. Would? Mostly, mostly for uh, the, the, the younger it is, the more important it is to have new oak because it gives uh, this vanilla taste, which mm -hmm. is very nice for the young cognac. Now, I remember over there at Bach Gabriel Sen seeing some wonderful, very old Dame Jeanne yes. Uh, yes. with some super old cognac yeah. imprisoned. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of our museum, our uh -huh. private museum, and uh, actually, you, you're right. When we have finished the aging after maybe 60, 70 years of uh, aging in oak cask, then our cellar master selects some uh, very nice uh, cognacs that we will put in this big glass bottle. Mm -hmm. Would you use some of those uh, big glass jars contents mm -hmm. in some particular blends? Sometimes can, do you take yeah, some uh, out of it? And act actually, in our ordage, uh, which is uh, available in the market, we, we have a very small proportion of 1917 cognac during the first war. Oh. So 100% Grand Champagne, mm -hmm. mostly from the 60s and uh, as I said, a drop of 1917 inside. So 50 years in average. The nose is very intense. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's where a cognac uh, can be a masterpiece me it's it's only takes time and you have to be careful with the selection of your cognacs so you have a, a lot of flavors uh, passion fruit uh, uh, leader um, very hard uh, very strong coffee I think too and you can also feel the very creamy creamy nose that you and the, the creamy taste that you will have when you will taste it Uh, like what a way to, to start the morning. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit early, that's true, but uh, it's, it's very nice cognac. Tour and elegance. <coughs> yeah. Mm. What does it mean? Yes. Yeah. 
we we want uh, we wanted to uh, to focus on nature because it's a uh, um, natural product in a way that there is no additives it's a rustic style of cognac because there is it's a lot of work to select but after the selection of the eau de vie we don't touch the product anymore so you mean no color added yes uh, no no add, no, no, sugar no sugar yeah nothing nothing yeah. like that 95 percent of the cognac on the market they are classic uh, mm -hmm. as the way they are traditional yeah but you know maybe this is a good opportunity to to mention that uh, yes lots most cognacs uh, do have a bit of of uh, spirit grade caramel added for mm -hmm. the color part mm -hmm. of it so that all the bottles are always of the same of the same color that Correct. does not add uh, sweetness so it doesn't interfere with it's with the taste it's correct but when we say sugar it's because sometimes there's a little bit of sugar and i don't don't believe that there would be tons of sugar to make mm. it to make it sweet it's not that it's it's only a tiny tiny little bit it's about uh, seven grams per liter so it's so that's really that's really tiny yeah. and and yeah. it it makes it it makes the approach of the cognac a yep. bit more a bit more uh, easy a bit it's it's very practical uh, way it's very practical goal it's just to decrease the attack of the alcohol on the mm -hmm. palate for especially for the young swan so that civilizes a bit the, yeah, the cognac definitely and, uh, and and in this case because some palates r rather have some mm. some dryness yes instead of instead of a instead of smoothness of smoothness yes um, they have this so yep. i believe uh, if you used to to maybe whiskies um, Definitely, maybe Scotch whiskey. <coughs> yeah, and uh, there's, for malt, no uh, for malt enthusiasts, they, they should mm -hmm. uh, like the, this one. Yes, and uh, th it, this is also something that um, is very interesting regarding mixology. Uh, mm -hmm. People would who, go, who work with cocktails, they are working with this ones. Very but good. Yeah. yeah, because there is there is complexity. It's it's a bit it's a bit longer. It carries. Yep. It seems to yep. uh, not be as um, as palatable right away on the first yep. at, on, on the attack, but yep. then. It seems to be a bit yeah, longer. Yeah, this is right. Have you seen some vintages that were absolutely terrible after a few years of aging? Mm -hmm. um, and can you relate this to maybe a bad, uh, bad, bad rain during yeah, harvest yeah. or, or things like this? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. The the weather is very important to to get a very good wine because a very good wine will give, in general, a very good cognac. But a very bad wine will never give a very good cognac. All right, because. So you see, so, some people understand that um, you don't need good wine to make to make cognac because mm. of the acidity, the high acidity level, the mm. low alcohol content. But yep. this is a misunderstanding. Yeah, definitely, because di distillation is just a question of concentration. So when you concentrate a bad raw material, mm -hmm. you will have a, a bad distill. Very good. Well, yep. thank, thank you. you for visiting us. Thank you so much. And now Rene. for our viewers, um, will they be able to visit? Uh, yeah, we are definitely open for uh, two visitors and uh, you just have to, to contact the company and we will arrange uh, a private tour in our cellars. Very good. Well, yeah. you should definitely take him up on the, on the offer. Yeah. Thank you. Santé. Santé. Uh, so, Hervé, everybody had its own prohibition time. Mm -hmm. uh, what about this one? Yeah, this is, you can see uh, three crosses on the label and the, the Norwegian name of this cognac is Trekorsch and this was made by my great-grandfather to make sure that people who wanted to get some alcohol at that time it was the only way was to get a, a paper from a doctor and uh, so it was considered as medicine so this is why we used uh, the cross. Should we still consider this as a uh Maybe a preventive cure? I cannot guarantee this. <laughs> <laughs> but it, maybe it helps. <laughs> <laughs>